Uh, ma'am, uh, 100 participants have already joined. Should we okay. begin? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's almost 102 now. So, okay. we can start. Uh, shall I begin? Yes. Uh, ma'am, I'll just introduce you to all the participants and then you can begin, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Uh, good afternoon to all the educators uh, present here. I think, ma'am, some people can't hear. Uh, some people are unable to hear. Akashwana Mori is also raising a hand. There is some kind of a disturbance. I think someone's audio is on, ma'am. That is why. I, let me just mute all and then uh, you can unmute. Yes, ma'am. Please continue. Yes. Good afternoon to all the educators present uh, on this uh, virtual platform. Uh, this is Jayshree Zadho, principal of Shantini Kitum School, and uh, I have been recently appointed as vice president of uh, Sahodaya Complex, Kolhapur. Uh, I welcome you all on the behalf of Sahodaya Complex, Kolhapur. And uh, as you all know, we have all come together uh, for a training session on uh, lesson planning, how to uh, make an effective lesson plan. Uh, it is a great pleasure today to introduce you all to our respected and gifted speaker who is blessed with unmatched oratory skills and one who has conquered the art of captivating the audience over a decade. Uh, we have with us Mrs. Khyati Dwarkadas from Gopi Birla School, Mumbai. Uh, she's here to train us extensively on how to make an effective lesson plan. We all are waiting to hear from you uh, and learn from you the latest trends and techniques uh, to make our classroom teaching more effective. Let me also take a moment to speak about Kathy Ma'am's various roles and rewards she has earned during her career spanning over a decade. Kathy Ma'am has been a resource person for CBSC and a master trainer with nearly 80 online training sessions to her credit till date. She has trained over 10,000 participants from CBSC, COE, Pune and Ajmer. She has also been instrumental in creation of teacher training manual for CBSC, COE, Pune and problem solving, which will be released soon. She has held several important positions, prominent among them are Chief Mentor, SPTA, India, Master Trainer, CBSC, National Coordinator and Board Organizing Member, Mumbai Chapter, CED Foundation, and to mention a few. Amongst the myriad accolades and awards, I'm so proud to mention that she has received a letter of appreciation from Mrs. Smriti Rani, former Minister of Human Resource, Union of India for excellent result at CBSC from GBMS, along with the Global Teacher Award 2020, International Teachers Guild Award, and the list is endless. So without taking much of your time, all of you present here, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Kathy Ma'am. Ma'am, we are very eager to hear from you and the platform is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jayashree, ma'am. It's so, uh, such a pleasure listening to your voice. Uh, though after some uh, months now, I believe I haven't heard from you in a few months. But yes, I think we met last at the Pedagogical Leadership Program and uh, that was the last time I met you. So, uh, Though in the last few months, I haven't caught up with so many of you. It's uh, once again my pleasure to be back into the Kolhapur uh, Sahodai School Complex. And 
it gives me immense pleasure and uh, I feel deeply humbled uh, with that long introduction. Uh, thank you so much, uh, ma'am. Uh, let us quickly begin with uh, today's session. I will start with a short prayer. I request uh, all the participants to first have their videos on. Uh, the recording will have black screens if your videos are off. So uh, it's my honest request, have your videos on. And I had also put in a request uh, to have some writing uh, material with you with a textbook uh, so that you can do some hands-on lesson planning, though we may not be able to complete all in a short span of time that we have for training. But at least you will try and get some hands-on training. Uh, I request uh, all the participants to, at the same time, uh, not introduce themselves right now. Uh, for all of us, the uh, feedback form will uh, soon be uh, circulated, I think, towards the end of the session. And that's the time when uh, you can uh, fill in everything you want about yourself and myself because uh, I have also requested uh, Ma'am uh, Sashmita Mohanty to share the feedback daily with me. Uh, I love to improve my sessions with the feedback I receive. So please don't hesitate, whatever the feedback be, feel free to mention it uh, when the feedback form is shared with you. Uh, so let's, uh, I hope all the videos have begun. Some of you haven't yet started with the videos and uh, with your name, there'll be a black screen on the recording. So I hope you understand what it means. And I also uh, hope you understand what it is to teach a blank screen. We've all undergone that in the last two years of the pandemic. So I request uh, all the participants to kindly uh, undo that blank uh, screen of yours. Thank you so much. Let's start with a very short prayer. It's a universal prayer, so I think none of you should have any problem. Sahanavavatu, Sahanam Bhunattu, Sahaviryam Karavavahe, Tejasvina Vadhita Mastu, Maam Vedvesha. Thank you so much for joining me into the prayer and we shall uh, immediately uh, begin with the session. Thank you so much. Uh, please allow me to share my screen. And here we go. Okay. So uh, while uh, we are here, uh, of course, you've seen a lot of introduction about me and a little more to add to it. It's also the Innovation Ambassador and School Training Noodle Coordinator now, uh, besides the HOD being Pair Master Trainer and Resource Person for CPSC as always. So uh, today we're going to be talking about lesson planning. And uh, when we talk of lesson planning, I would love to hear from all of you 
the what, the why, and the how of lesson planning. So the goals of this session basically will be in uh, helping you to identify and explain what is a lesson plan and how to develop a good lesson plan for the 21st century learners, keeping the current uh, CBSC guidelines in mind. At the same time, uh, we shall also uh, try to uh, make, at least begin with the making of a hands-on lesson plan for all of you wonderful participants. I would also love to have a lot of interaction during the session into the chat box. If uh, time permits, then I will let you unmute. But feel free to use the chat box uh, for fruitful discussions. So when we talk of uh, lesson planning, uh, the rationale for making a lesson plan derives uh, from the theories of learning and particularly the constructivist learning theory, where the lesson plan is designed around the learning objectives, provides the learners with an opportunity to explore, build and demonstrate their learning. This approach shifts the learning environment from uh, the one that is teacher-centered to a very, very student-centered uh, learning environment. And, uh, you know, when we talk of a student-centered uh, learning environment, uh, you need to keep this in mind uh, that uh, when you keep the students at the heart or the core of learning, you will automatically start thinking about different ways and means to keep the learners engaged. Now, learners have a very, very different uh, system. Each learner believes in a different way of getting engaged. And you have to try and differentiate your teaching learning strategies for the diverse set of learners that we have in the school system. So all good teachers have a plan in mind when they deliver a teaching session. This could range from simple checklists to detailed structured plans. Lesson plans essentially a part of the teacher's toolbox. There's no teacher who doesn't have a lesson plan. And uh, you know they're developed by the teachers to guide them through the entire lesson. And uh, they are implemented appropriately, planned, and the entire uh, focus of the, the lesson plan is to achieve the learning outcome. So I can see two participants having uh, raised hands. One was uh, Pandurang Ganjave, and one is Reshma Rama Ghadi Gaukar. Okay, uh, sorry for the pronunciations, but yes, uh, if you need to speak something, please quickly unmute yourselves. Please unmute Kara. Yes, please unmute Kara. Pandurang, sir, do you need to speak something? Seeing no reaction, I keep you muted. Uh, the rest of you are requested to remain muted. Thank you. A lesson plan traditionally includes details of a lesson, the learning outcomes, which need to be covered, the methodology that will be used, resources, the materials required, and the activities that will be carried out both to engage and assess the learners. And the final part of the lesson plan addresses evaluation of the lesson from the learners and the tutors perspective. So uh, quickly in the chat box, I'll change the uh, chat settings to enable only chat with me. And uh, so uh, you can quickly uh, tell me now, I've opened only the chat, uh, what are the kinds of lesson plans that we have?
what are the kinds of lesson plans that we have. So Pooja Mane Ma'am says theory part lesson plans. Okay, and uh, Monica Ma'am says uh, theme-based integrated lesson plans, activity-based lesson plans, group discussion-based lesson plans, lovely. Uh, so uh, Sneha Pardeshi ji writes uh, somewhat a very perfect answer. She says daily lesson plans, weekly unit, topic, subject, e-learning. You can also create plans uh, for different learners. So uh, let me just get back to Sneha ma'am's uh, part of the chat. Uh, you can create plans for different education levels, length of the learning period, or based on the learner's ability. Wow. Kudos to you, Sneha Parteshi, ma'am. Uh, Vaishali, ma'am, says toy-based lesson plans. We have toy-based pedagogy. Well, I've never heard of a toy-based lesson plan. So, uh, Teacher-centered and learner-centered plans, Redmi Note 7 Pro, yes, that was a great answer. Art-integrated lesson plans, good Kalyani, ma'am. Uh, tools used in the lesson plan, Aishwarya, ma'am, do include uh, peer discussion, activity-based, and revision. So we have practical, hands-on, LSR-oriented lesson plans. All right. Thank you uh, so much. I shall uh, stop with that. So as we all are aware, all of you are brilliant educators here. And uh, in all of your brilliance, one thing uh, remained common. We are well aware of the types of lesson plans. We are aware that we have diverse learners in our classrooms. And for a fact, that we cater to their needs. So uh, these uh, seem to be really great answers. And while I told you we'll be talking about the constructivist theories, the three main constructivist uh, thinkers or educators that we talk about are Jean Piaget, Vygotsky, and of course, Dewey, the man behind the entire experiential learning concept. So when we talk about cognitive constructivism, we talk about the concepts and the principles. When we talk about uh, Vygotsky's uh, social constructivism, we talk about social interaction, psychological tools, the more knowledgeable other, the scaffolding and the tutoring and the zone of proximal development. And we cannot forget the father of experiential learning, John Dewey. So if you've read the CBSE handbook on uh, experiential learning, the Padkar Kumar and the Karkar Kumari, the entire concept behind experiential learning and John Dewey's theory has been put into practice in that book. However, when we talk about lesson planning, uh, we have this uh, main thing uh, where we say you start planning before the class, then what will you do during the class and after the class? So this is a typically a lesson plan cycle. Now, before the class, you will identify the learning objectives, plan the specific learning activities and assessments and the sequence of the lesson, create a realistic timeline, and plan for a lesson closure. So before the class, you actually have a lot to do. I request you to take a note down of this particular uh, slide because this is where many of us do get caught up. Uh, we don't really think about the before the class event. So identify the learning objectives, plan the specific learning activities, assessments, the sequence of lesson, what comes next. Create a realistic timeline. This is where many of us fail. And plan for a lesson closure. 
during the lesson or during the class, share the plan with your students. There's no harm in doing that. It helps them stay engaged on track. It leads to less misbehavior, less discrepancy in your classroom, less miscreants. Everyone stays focused. And after the class, reflect. This is also what we forget to do. Reflect on what worked well and why, what did not work well, or what you could have done to make it work better. Okay, now somebody is having an unmuted microphone. I request that person to kindly stay uh, muted. I am muting all again. Thank you uh, so very much, uh, because there is a kind of disturbance with an unmuted microphone. Thank you. So uh, please take note of this slide. It is very, uh, very important that you note it down. Now, a lesson plan is the instructor's road map of what needs to be learned, how it will be done effectively during class time before you plan your lesson. You will first need to identify learning objectives for the class meeting. Then you can design and appropriate learning activities and develop strategies to obtain feedback. Now, something's come up in the chat, so I'll open the chat box on the side. All right, Sneha ma'am is one step ahead. Uh, she talks about a sequential lesson plan unit, which is broken up into planning, instruction, and reflection. Thank you, Sneha ma'am. So, uh, you can design appropriate learning activities and develop strategies to obtain feedback on student learning. A successful lesson plan addresses and integrates three components. Objectives for student learning, the teaching learning activities, and strategies to check student understanding. These are the main three components in the roadmap of your lesson plan. So the next thing is where are we going to find objectives? This is the simplest thing. If you are a grade 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, teacher, you will open the curriculum shared by the CBSC and you will find the learning objectives. So uh, each uh, lesson that the board has prescribed in the curriculum for the coming academic session has the learning objectives unit wise for you. Keeping that in mind, you will need learning outcomes because learning objectives are for the plan, but learning outcomes are what you share with the class. And learning outcomes, now where to find these? So these are also found on the CBSC website. Once you log in into the uh, CBSC website, you will find uh, CBE resources or competency-based education resources. And with that, uh, you will be able to find a booklet on NCERT learning outcomes for elementary stage and for the secondary stage. So right up from grade one to grade 10, you can see the learning outcomes. Then you have to design your teaching learning activities. So while designing your teaching learning activities, you have to again make it student at the heart of the learning culture. So think about what will keep the learners engaged. It's quite boring, you know, just imagine a child is with us in school, uh, say for nine or eight periods, depending on your school timing. So close to about seven or eight hours in a day, a student is with us in school and we teach seven to eight subjects in a day. And 
Each teacher talks for about 40 to 45 minutes in the classroom and a student listens on. First period, English. Come on, open X textbook, X reader. Let us open to page number 10, para number five, line number three. Let's start reading. And the class goes on for 45 minutes. Period two, bell rings, period two. Student has to swap the mind and start. Second period, social science. Let's begin. The comes the history teacher, another bore. And the history teacher starts. Today we are going to learn about Mahatma Gandhi. And you will open in your history textbooks to page number 15. And we shall learn about boycott. And uh, X person, come on, start reading about boycott. And the child starts reading about boycott from a particular paragraph, a particular line, and the rest of the class will say stop. Or if you are active and observant in your classrooms, another very important thing that we normally see in the classrooms is where they make aeroplanes and throw at the teacher or at each other. They make paper pellets because they are bored. Or you will see them eating in the classroom. A tiffin will definitely open in the classroom if you are a bore. Uh, whether your period is before the break or after the break, you will always see them eating. Or they will be doing some other subjects homework in your class. All of these are signs to identify that you're a bore. You're not interesting. Your classroom is not engaging them. And then we also need to, so that's a, you know, uh, when you watch Crime Patrol, uh, they say, you know, vigilant or they talk about uh, these are signs that you identify from and plan your teaching learning activities to keep the learners engaged and strategies to check student understanding now you uh, when you plan your lesson you also need to see if they've understood what you've been rattling off so if you've told them the learning outcomes, if you shared the lesson plan and you keep them engaged in the class, you will be able to also plan something, you know, very simple, a quiz, a kahoot, a word wall, a map work, some small thing which tells you and the learners whether what you have taught in the classroom on that day has been understood by them. Specifying concrete objectives for student learning will help you determine the kinds of teaching and learning activities you will use in the class, while those activities will define how you check whether learning objectives have been accomplished. So when you talk of the lesson plan, this is another important uh, screenshot. There are three things in the lesson plan cycle that we look into. What do I want the students to learn? Our curriculum is vast. So what do I want the students to learn? What teaching learning strategies and activities will I use? And how will I check for understanding? So something's come up in the chat again. So here we have uh, Sneha ma'am once again telling us learning objectives should be used to guide students as they work through the course and to ass assess their learning progress. Excellent learning objectives provide a guide for students when reviewing materials and preparing for assessment. So once again, thank you Sneha ma'am, but at the same time, uh, let me uh, reinforce this. Objectives are for the plan. Outcomes are what we share with the students. We have outcome-based learning, not objective-based learning. So objectives remain in the plan, outcomes go to the student. 
we test the learning outcomes under competency-based education. So we check their learning, we check their understanding. Right. So I'll keep the chat box on here only in the side, so I don't need to keep going to it again and again while we proceed. So as I told you, uh, there's competency-based education and under competency-based education, what does CBE look like? Now, if you visit the uh, CBSC uh, website, the academics website of CBSC, you will see competency-based education there. It's a separate tab and it talks a lot about three important things, curriculum design, teaching and learning, as well as assessment. So under a curriculum design, it talks about the core principle in approach towards curricula, which should be grounded in real world context, covering topics with relevance to employability and the daily life of the students. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you that uh, students need to understand what's going to happen. Like I am teaching history, geography, economics, political science, but why am I teaching it? The student needs to understand the learning outcome. The objective, the goal is what I'm going to achieve, but the outcome of the learning is what the student needs to understand. And that can only happen if my teaching strategy is going to be connected to their daily life. The teaching and learning, a general principle of competency-based education, it's oriented delivery comprises to student-centered learning with a focus on the teacher empowering the students to learn actively supported by feedback. So uh, Pooja Mane ma'am has something in the okay. chat. Uh, she mentions students have to relate their day-to-day -day life and use it, uh, use what they have learned in their everyday life. Exactly. So uh, that's exactly what we need to do. And finally, we talk about assessment. Now, assessing the application of knowledge and skills to real world context using authentic problems which draw on real life uh, are the key uh, features of competency based assessment. So you can also see Kalyani Pawar ma'am writing, uh, teaching should be inquiry based. It, uh, we should definitely have a curiosity of the learners being roused through our teaching. If the curiosity is not aroused, we fail in the teaching learning process. So while uh, the CBSC also focuses on competency-based education, uh, which is a must through lesson planning. You talk about your curriculum design, the teaching learning process and assessment. It's the same thing that you do in your lesson plan, learning outcomes, the strategies and the assessing techniques. So it's the same thing told to you by the CBSC time and again. So when we uh, plan the steps for a lesson plan, uh, we will be looking at a few steps, close to six steps of a effective lesson plan. We firstly outline the learning objectives. So when we outline uh, the learning objectives, what are we going to see in the learning objectives? The first step is to determine what you want students to learn and be able to do at the end of the class. That's a very, very important thing. If you don't begin with that, what do you want the students to learn at the end of the class? That should be very clearly in our minds before we begin.
you to help the learners you need to specify your objectives for student learning in the plan and the outcomes to the class so if you notice in most uh, schools abroad they have these uh, slips of paper which they paste on the blackboard and uh, their outcomes are written on those uh, slips of paper which go up onto the blackboard which makes it simpler for the students to understand and remember what is going to be the outcome of this lesson so we frame the objectives or outline the learning objectives in the plan with what is the topic what do i want the students to learn what do i want them to understand and to be able to do the skills at the end of the class and what do i want them to take away from this particular topic these are the most important things we want our students to know then we start ranking these objectives according to their priorities according to the importance of them so then the next thought that comes to our mind i have a 40 minute class now if i take up so many objectives so many skills so many activities what will i not be able to do and what if i'm not able to cover everything rank it prioritize it keep the other unimportant ones towards the end once you outline the learning objectives rank them this step will prepare you for managing class time and accomplishing the more learning more important learning objectives then you consider the following questions which are the most important concepts kavita kagale ma'am would you want to unmute and ask a question no ma'am sorry then please lower your hand thank you so uh, what are the most important concepts ideas and skills you want your students to be able to grasp and apply why are they important what if you run out of time what could you do what should you omit and conversely if you are hard pressed for time what can you skip these need to be focused upon so i hope each one of you is taking down notes that's why i am reinforcing the concept time and again uh, i believe that at the end of this session each one of you will be a great uh, lesson planner and will be able to execute some wonderful plans then the next uh, point that comes up is develop an introduction now um many of us use uh, toy based pedagogy we used uh, storytelling as a pedagogy we use blended learning uh some of us even use gamification so uh, i think science teachers love to use uh, laboratory and experimenting uh, many of us do use graphic organizers so uh, when we talk of these uh, particular activities uh, you also want to know about what the students already know when you come to when they come to class and therefore sometimes you ask them for a kwl or a mind map or you begin with something so you need to plan an introduction you want to build a background like you know how these uh, television serials build uh, soap operas how they build a background daily soaps to build a background you know for a week they will talk about mothers day the importance of the mother and why the mother is the head of the family and how she is neglected and all uh, they take a week to build on a mother's importance 
and the mother's day episode they will spend 10 minutes on so you develop an introduction where you design a specific activities importance everything about the topic uh, sometimes the topic may not lend itself to uh, too much of an introduction drama something so you want to do something small in that case you just turn around and say how many of you have heard about something you just raise your hands in the class and you will find people raising their hands that means they've heard about it you don't want to know what they've heard so today if i'm going to be talking about a world war in my history class i will simply go to my class and ask how many of you have heard about the russia ukraine war and obviously everyone's heard about it because it's currently on then they will tell me and i probe further they will tell me the causes what could be the preempted consequences who is supporting whom uh, which country is a friend which is a traitor which is not so uh, you will automatically come to know their general knowledge their knowledge on current affairs plus i am it will help me link the current affairs something happening in their daily life to something that has already happened years ago the world wars so i have established a connect without the students knowing that my line has formed my storyline is ready so background information has happened then i will develop some creative story talking about like i have taken information from the class about russia ukraine friends of russia friends of ukraine who said they would support russia who said they would support ukraine who backed out what was india's role what was the role of usa france the allied countries of my world war you know i will bring all those things in context then move backwards talking about the world war so what has happened is the students have already placed the countries in their mind there is thinking happening here which is again promoted by the cbsc and with that thinking i have provoked the storyline of the world war happening years ago so that's one way of doing it you obviously are brilliant uh, people i think uh, somebody called techno smart uh, keeps forgetting that uh, they need to be muted i keep muting all the participants at all times but some people just click on the unmute button by mistake please be careful uh, consider the following questions when planning your introduction how will i check whether students know anything about the topic or do they have any preconceived notions about it sometimes you know when the academic year changes and uh, you become a class teacher of a class that you've not taught you ask uh, colleagues in your uh, staff rooms or it's like our water cooler moment or chai pe charcha are ye bachcha kaisa hai ye bachcha bahut charche mein tha and automatically you have some preconceived notions about the class about the bachchas in your class but never judge a book by the cover everybody has their own preconceived notion the child may be very good in somebody's class but not so good in your class and all of us know the psychology behind it so what are some commonly held ideas or misconceptions about the topics that students might be familiar with or might espouse so if i were to talk about uh, tsunamis for example then i would to automatically keep in mind that children think tsunamis are wave movement so if they have not learned enough science for a tsunami or enough tidal movement and wave movement and science they will think tsunami happens with the pull of the moon that is a misconception 
so i have to clear it and in my lesson plan i will jot it down what will i do then to introduce the topic and then so if uh, you were introducing uh, something like jhansi uh, ki rani or the revolt of 1857 so you will find all these nice stories or some videos or uh, since the cbsc uh, stresses so much on cross curricular linkages uh, i would use some poem khub ladi mardani wo to jhansi wali rani thi बुंदेले हर बोलो के मो हमने सुनी कहानी थी खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वो तो झांसी वाली रानी थी सो दैट वुड ऑटोमेटिकली क्रिएट अ क्रॉस करिकुलर लिंकेज विद अ लैंग्वेज ड्रामा पोएट्री ऑल ऑफ दैट वुड बी इन प्लेस एट द सेम टाइम इफ आई एम डूइंग वाटर रिसोर्सेस देन मराठी टीचर्स वुड ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट दिस वन पोएम एंड डूइंग वाटर रिसोर्सेस the textbook is quite boringly tells you how much percent of the earth is covered with water and land and ice and fresh water ground water it's quite boring to tell the children that so there is one poem that all students across the state of maharashtra learn in marathi yere yere pausa tula de to paisa paisa sala khota pau sala motha and especially in places like uh, the konkan coast and uh, maharashtra the coastal areas of maharashtra we know that it's been raining nearly for the entire year it's barely stopped raining so the connect of the rain the connect of the climate the connect of the sea and the connect of a uh, poem in marathi a lot connect of connections can happen so uh, we have uh, shabana husain mulla from sunshine english medium school uh, so good afternoon good evening to ma'am uh, i don't know why the message has come but ashraf sir did not understand ashraf sir i'd like you to unmute and talk uh, what you have not understood i would love to repeat what you have not understood ashraf sir ashraf sir where is he i can't spot you otherwise i'll unmute you here you are Yes, Ashraf sir, please unmute. Okay, Ashraf sir says I can't speak due to surgery. Okay, Ashraf sir, would you like to mention in the chat in that case what you have not understood? you can forward your question to me in the chat ashraf sir i will go over it later so what will we do to introduce a topic then we have plan specific learning activities for the main body of the lesson so we are going to explain the main body of the lesson using real life examples analogies uh visuals we're going to try and gain attention of the students appeal to their different learning styles so don't forget howard gardner's multiple intelligences bloom's taxonomy all of these need to be a part of your lesson and as you plan your examples and activities estimate how much time you will spend on each build in extended time for explanation discussion be prepared to move on quickly to different applications or problems identify strategies that check for understanding so these questions would uh, help you design uh your uh, learning activities what will i do to explain the topic what will i do to illustrate the topic in a different way how can i engage the students in the topic what are some relevant real life examples and analogies or situations that can help students what will students need 
to help them understand the topic better. Okay, so Gunjan, uh, sorry, Gajanan ji writes, how much time do we need to keep for introduction? Uh, Priya Ketgale ji says, day-to-day uh, -day experience can be added, all right, for a better understanding. Okay, Ashraf sir, how to teach poetry for grade one and two is your question. Uh, I do have an example you can learn from there. Uh, so uh, towards the end of my theory teaching and before you get on to your practical, I will show you the English lesson. So plan to check for student understanding. Uh, you have explained the topic and illustrated it with different examples. So you need to check for student understanding. How will you know that students are learning? And like I have already told you, you need to think of quick ways. So what can you do in the classroom? You can either ask someone to summarize or you can summarize it for the class or you ask questions like a quick quiz or you play a game and everyone or you give out this blue or green or whatever they're called these posted kind of small slips take down the feedback of from everyone and take it back assess it so think about the specific questions you can ask students to check for their understanding write them down, paraphrase them, so you're prepared to ask the questions in different ways. Sometimes if you ask a question, uh, you may not get your expected answer. So you have to predict the answers to every question and you write down the question in different ways. Suppose this question does not work as planned, then what will I do? How am I going to ask it? And plan its expected answer alongside. At the same time, don't go so unprepared and so overconfident that, okay, I have asked my questions, here are my predicted questions, here are my predicted answers. Keep one more place for prediction. We are here to quench the curiosity of the learners. So that one thing remains. What will the learners ask me when I am teaching? What will the learners ask me when I ask them this question? It's not necessary that you will always receive a response. A question may also receive a cross question. So ask yourself, what questions will I ask students? What will I have students to do to demonstrate that they are understanding? And go back to my list of objectives. What activity can I have students do to check whether each of these has been accomplished? An important strategy will also help you with time management is anticipate student questions. That's exactly what I told you, predict student questions probably that will also help you focus on meeting the learning outcomes. So there is some uh, in, uh, I think a lot in the chat. So uh, we have people writing and I'm happy people are writing. Uh, we have Pooja ma'am saying, ask uh, questions based on previous knowledge of the students, okay. Then we have someone saying, uh, what points to use for computer practical? Can you please explain those? Okay, we will think about those. Some lessons in social science need a lot of explanations and certain topics need to be taught again, which previously that they have learned but not able to recall. We need more periods than what we have in hand. I agree with that, ma'am. So how to go about it, okay? Uh, we can even ask about average uh, students to get more information about the topic and elaborate their understanding related to the topic. Why not? 
uh, for science, we can ask students to question each other. Why only science? Isn't every subject uh, science? Preparing a KWL, be ready with sub questions, exactly a scaffolding. How to manage time? Uh, if you uh, watch that original uh, Mahabharat serial on television, it used to come on Doordarshan some years ago. Uh, there's one more thing, encourage slow learners to answer prior preparation of the lesson. How to plan for map skills in geography. Wow. I think people need a session on social science separately. It's a two-day capacity building program. I will uh, definitely inform uh, Ma Mohanti ma'am about it. Uh, otherwise, Jaishri ma'am is taking a note of these questions. But uh, yes, uh, to answer most of these questions, uh, as thinkers, we are educational thinkers and uh, reformers, how to please explain about language teaching. Okay, so as I understand, uh, teachers are uh, qualified with a degree in education. So everyone has a method to their uh, kitty. Okay, so Sneha Pardeshi ma'am is very strongly in favor of a capacity building program on social science. Surely, please ask your Sahodai for it. I will be uh, more than happy to host it. So, uh, well, uh, we have a lot of uh, educational strategies in our kitty. Whether you teach English, math, science, social science, Hindi, French, Greek, Latin, computers or any other subject for that matter. We always have a lot of strategies in common. Like I gave you two examples. One I gave you I, uh, to teach a world war, I would begin with the Russia-Ukraine war and go back because that would tell me that by now the students know the placement of the countries in their head. Where are these countries? who is supporting whom, who is not, my base is built, and I would go back. Another example I gave you was from the revolt of 1857, where I needed to talk to them about the causes of the revolt of 1857, the uprising. So one way of telling them would be watch Mangal Pandey, the uprising, and you come to class. The second way of doing it, which I would normally have practiced, would be telling them the poem. Which poem would I talk about? Bunde le har bolo ke mu. Hamne suni kahani thi. Khub ladi mardani, wo to chhansi wali tha. Or you tell students of the current date, you watch Ahilya by Holkar, you get the history of the Marathas. I think it's a television serial even today. So why watch only Amazon Prime and Netflix? Why not watch serials which are connected to your curriculum? So you can tell them. For map work, uh, somebody had put a question, how do you teach map work? You teach through the latitude, la uh, longitude, karaoke. That puts the concept of the latitude and longitude in place. For the grid of the latitude, longitude, you need to ask them questions to name the IPL teams and put them in the compass direction. IPL teams are current events. So students know all the IPL teams every year. So from uh, Chennai Super Kings and Mumbai Indians to Lucknow and Delhi, everybody knows where is what. So those directions fit in well, form your grid. And then there are uh, Bhuvan app, which is a government app. There is Cetera. Uh, you can use WordWall and create your own map. There are a lot of these map 
uh, strategies you can use. Uh, otherwise, in the social science capacity building, I take a one hour session on uh, maps. Uh, role plays are an essential activity, uh, Monica, ma'am, in most subjects, they fit in well. Uh, currently, I was doing uh, soil resources with current grade 10. And I asked them to use multiple intelligence. It was not a graded activity, but as a teaching strategy, I asked them to use multiple intelligences to deal with the types of soils. And uh, I have a few samples with me, which of course I can't show you right now, uh, though they are, a lot of them are here. But what I will do is I will read out one of those uh, songs. Obviously, I can't sing like the child, so I'll read out one of those songs for you. Uh, the song is uh, on laterite soil, and it's written and composed to music by the child. So uh, the child writes, acidic, acidic, laterite is acidic, Latin word later, which means soils of brick. Laterite is found in Western Hills, acidic, acidic, laterite is acidic. Humus rich and humus poor, laterite is all over. Tamil Nadu and Kerala, Bengal and Odisha. Come on, say acidic, acidic, laterite is acidic. So we have this child who is created. He's written the lyrics of the song based on the textual description of the laterite soil. And then he's composed it to music. And then you have his group singing the song with music composed on a musical track in the classroom. So these are little things that you can do. Uh, somebody who said English, I will be showing you a sample of an English uh, lesson. Uh, so whether you teach literature or grammar or language, uh, you can uh, definitely go for it. Okay, Gajanan sir, there is Cetera, there is Bhuvan app, there is wordwall.net, you can visit any, any of them. Then I have, uh, some students will understand the concept quickly, after some time they will forget. Uh, there is something called John Dewey's uh, theory on experiential learning, Sunita Havinalji. Uh, if you follow the theory to the T, learning by doing, students will never forget. In fact, these will be the students who will remember your concept for life. Uh, thank you, Monica, ma'am. Uh, Gajanan, sir, I hope you've noted down the sites. Cetera, Bhuvan app, worldwall.net. So, uh, by now, you would have finished reading here, and we'll move ahead with our main topic on lesson planning. For computer applications, I uh, personally do not know any particular uh, practical experience, but uh, yeah, why not? If you, uh, it just comes to my mind, if you are doing Python in computers, in your practicals, you can ask them to create a face detection app or a face detection program. And uh, you ask them to write a program and create it. And uh, probably you teach them how to create that uh, stone, uh, paper, and uh, scissor game. And uh, with the face detection uh, technology using Python. I had done this uh, particular thing when I did uh, Guinness World Record, uh, GUVI, ICTE, CBSC, uh, Python course. So you can also try this out. It works well. It was very interesting to do that in computers. You can also try out something like that. Uh, Scratch also helps to create simple programs. Okay, Monica, ma'am, I am not aware of what is Scratch. Uh, maybe the computer teacher who's asked us this question can tell us uh, what computer program she's looking for 
Oh, Monica, ma'am, if you could uh, kindly elaborate, unmute yourself and elaborate, we'll be more than happy to hear from you. Ma'am, it, uh, it has its own curriculum. It's freely available and can be downloaded also. Uh -huh. It teaches, you know, from grade one and two, children can form simple, simple programs. And they can make their own games. They can make their own learning, problem-solving uh, things also using Scratch. All right. So it's a program that they can use for computers. Yes. And it's also used as a complete curriculum for computer teaching. Oh, lovely. So there was a computer teacher who asked us this question. Uh, could you give us examples for computers? So thank you for this example. The only example that otherwise came to my mind was this uh, face detection technology, which I see people using uh, AI. It uh, helps uh, a, in a, a lot of ways when uh, students try using artificial intelligence, because for today's uh, generation, you just talk to the phone and something is done. So you can try out those things. All right, thank you uh, so much. Uh, I think most of the questions here are answered. Now let's move ahead. Uh, develop a conclusion and a preview. So uh, obviously you need to develop a conclusion. You can't uh, say, okay, the bell has rung and I'm walking out. That cannot happen. So you need to develop a conclusion in your classroom, in your lesson plans. You go over the material, you summarize it. Uh, you either talk about the summary yourself, which is the sign of a boring teacher, or you ask the class a lot of questions where they come up with a summary. Uh, you take a feedback of the lesson though, take a thumbs up, thumbs down kind of a feedback. You can review the students' answers to gauge their understanding of the topic, explain something that's unclear. Uh, you can also like, you know, those daily soaps, the SAS Bahu serials, uh, begin the class with her recall. Pichle episode mein humne dekha. You know, begin with a recall. Then a preview into today's class. So some, you know, insights. And before you end, we will do something next time, which is going to be related to something, something you go blabbering about it, give them a preview. Agle episode mein hum ye karenge. And you give them a preview. When you give them this preview of your next class, it's going to make life easy for you. A curious child will definitely read up extra about that topic. And that solves your purpose. We are not here in the classroom to talk about a textbook which is easily available at home. Any child who is of a particular grade can read a textbook of the NCRT for that grade level. It is no rocket science. We are not here as teachers to make them be able to read a textbook. Our job is way beyond that. So uh, before I head on to this sixth point, I have some more chat. Okay, uh, now you are asking for a, a mind map. I don't know the context of the mind map. Okay, uh, probably question matrix for conclusion, why not? But whatever you do uh, as a conclusion, whatever you do for the conclusion, it should be something that is not very heavy on you as well. If you ask them to write down some five questions or something, you will have to assess it. So make, uh, keep that in mind. We already have a lot of assessments. And if you happen to be teaching across grades or across divisions, how much will you assess each day? Is your life only an assessment uh, machine? Uh, well, I do know what a mind map is and I do know what a concept map is. I do know what a tree diagram and a fishbone are. 
uh, apparently uh, mind maps are not used as conclusion notes uh, exit cards can be taken up as concluding notes uh, so the preview of the next class as i tell you is going to spur interest in the students and the last thing create a realistic timeline so you're going to start with a smart goal specific measurable achievable realistic and time bound your class is 40 minute long you plan for only 20 minutes why because in the 20 minutes you're going to be introducing the topic you will have a discussion you will interact with the class you have to even do the activity explain go beyond the book uh take a feedback conclude answer their questions ask your questions that's going to take time so be realistic if you talk for 40 minutes nobody is listening to you so create a realistic timeline keep it flexible that brings us to another very important question and it's not yet come in the chat box the only thing that's coming in the chat box time and again is how to manage time the curriculum is vast how do we manage time the answer is competency based education and right from my first slide i have said prioritize the learning objectives and outcomes and which concepts would you must teach in order to uh, meet the learning outcomes that is what you need to do it's no rocket science to be able to read a textbook so how to complete the syllabus managing time is what i have just answered the lesson more needs to be understood absolutely monica ma'am and we also need to be telling our teachers and students both it is competency based education the rote learning system learn and vomit has gone it is now based on bloom's taxonomy you understand the concept and retain it for your lifetime okay so dattatre shinde sorry dattatre dinde ji says time management is the most important part of the lesson plan so when you're planning you need to uh, keep you know time for each activity whether you're doing a think pair share or you're doing any other activity of your choice and you need to say okay this activity is here it's going to take me 15 minutes 10 minutes 5 minutes 2 minutes keep that time plan a few extra minutes for the activity if time is extra you can use it wisely if you run out of time you will be you know in a bad position plan an extra activity or an extra discussion question if you have time left be flexible be ready to adjust your lesson plan keeping student needs in mind always have a plan b just if plan a does not work flipped classroom also saves time but uh, currently with uh, our learners i don't know about learner learners uh, specifically to kolhapur but learners in mumbai Uh, do not appreciate flipped classroom in uh, many conditions uh, they prefer learning in the class uh, in, though it's a very useful uh, technique i do use it on some occasions in kolhapur if it is a very uh, well used uh, technique please feel free to follow flipped classroom so long as it is meaningfully used so then it comes to presenting your lesson plan let your students know what they will be learning and doing in the class it will help them stay focused engaged and on track you can 
share the lesson plan, tell them the agenda on the board, tell them explicitly what they will be learning and doing. Now, when you plan also, don't say the teacher will explain. When the teacher is explaining right there, what will the students be doing? Teacher is writing on the blackboard. So the teacher is backing the class. What are the students doing when the teacher is writing on the blackboard? That needs to be on the plan. Every moment of your class needs to be in the plan. Okay, use PPT. PPTs don't always work as well because if you use a PPT, what are you doing? Uh, provide a meaningful organization of the class time. Help students not only remember better, follow your presentation, understand the rationale behind the activity in the class. But even the activities tell them why they are doing that. Have a visible agenda on the board and help you and the students stay on track. And then the most important thing, reflect on the plan. What worked, why, what did not work, why, what could you have done to make it work? And how could you have done it? take up feedback from the students, from the teachers, from your colleagues, invite people to view your lessons. It's only when people sit and view your lessons will you plan for the contingencies. Uh, your colleagues from the school, from the department, from different subjects, your coordinators, HODs, principals, vice principals. These are the people who will view your lessons, observe your lessons and give you a feedback. Take note of the feedback you received. Not all feedback is good. Sometimes the feedback may not be very good. No problem. There's always scope for improvement. Who says I'm a perfect person? I too may make a mistake. There is scope for improvement. You can even video record your lesson and view the video recording later and improve upon it. And consult staff members. Sometimes, you know, you yourself feel something did not work well. Talk to people, find out what did not work well and what you could have done to work better. So like today on this platform, we are sharing a lot of strategies, not only for my subject, across subjects. You too can find out certain strategies. Talk to people. You're in a Sahoda. I'm sure you have each other's contact details. Talk to each other and find out what can we do better. So to be effective, the lesson plan does not need to be an exhaustive document. You're not framing the Constitution of India. You're creating a lesson plan for about 40 minutes which describes every possible classroom scenario. It does not have to anticipate every student's response and a question. It should provide you with a general outline of what your teaching learning goals are, how you may plan to accomplish them. It's a reminder of what you want to do, how you want to do, when you want to. A productive lesson is not one in which everything goes as planned, but one in which both the student and the teacher learn from each other. That is a productive lesson. And we need to have the lessons very, very productive. So there are nine things that we need in a lesson. First, gain the learner's attention. Inform the learners of the learning outcomes. Check their prior learning. You present the content. Provide guidance. So there are things that you need to do with the students. So you discuss a question. Uh, let the students come out with the answer. Multiple students will come up with the answer and you guide them into a particular answer. Then you give them one or two questions for practice which is their independent instruction. You provide feedback, assess performance, enhance retention and transfer to the job. So bring them back onto focus. Again, the cycle repeats with gaining the learner's attention. Uh, the lesson plan is what I plan to give you right now. Uh, 
you need to hands-on plan your lesson. The steps will be identify the learning or outcomes, what is to be learned as a result of this lesson. The learning plan, the methodology, the type, the sequence, the activities, the role of the student and the teacher at every stage, the assessment before the lesson, during the lesson and after the lesson, resources required, and the evaluation method, was it, uh, that is your reflection, was it too easy, too difficult, what, when, where, why, how, what worked well, what did not. Uh, when you create a lesson plan, always keep in mind to use Bloom's taxonomy. It increases critical uh, thinking, problem solving. Uh, remember and understanding are the lowest orders of uh, the Bloom's taxonomy. Application to creativity is what goes in higher order, which we focus on under competency-based education. Also use multiple intelligences. We have a diverse group of learners and uh, Howard Gardner in his book, The Frames of Mind, has stressed on the needs of using multiple intelligences not only logical, mathematical, and uh, linguistic, but the other intelligences to create scope for other vocations to come up, like designers, engineers, cons uh, conservationists, actors, athletes, clergy, philosophers, bankers, accountants, leaders, social workers. How on earth will they come if we don't give them the option of coming up? Now, in the curriculum of the year 22-23 uh, prescribed by the CBSC on its academics website, uh, you will find uh, specific lesson plans for the topics which you need to include. So you can take a screenshot of this. You will need to include all of this in your lesson plan, uh, specific learning outcomes, Pedagogical strategies are your instructional strategies. Group activities, experiments, hands-on learning. Interdisciplinary uh, linkages, infusion of life skills, value education, gender sensitivity. Resources that you will need, like somebody said PPT. Assessment items for measuring the attainment of the learning outcomes and feedback and a remedial teaching plan, as well as inclusive practices. So please take a screenshot of this. Your school lesson plans will be based on these points given on this screen. I hope you've all taken a quick screenshot. Okay, now I will stop sharing this. I want to show you, uh, as I promised, I will share something else. I want to uh, show you a few other things. Uh, one is uh, Madeline Hunter's uh, lesson plan. So just allow me to uh, share my screen once again. Yeah. There is no sound here. It's a teacher survival guide. Okay, this is a different thing. Uh, yeah, just a moment. Let me share it with the uh, sound, just a moment. Uh, you may just find it interesting. I'll share it with sound and this being a video, I will go a bit uh, fast on it. It's a long video, otherwise it's a 13 minute video. I am that Demographically, Portuguese, Brazilian, but it's definitely a diverse high school as well. Nicole enjoys teaching and has a close rapport with her students, but planning engaging lessons for her 80-minute classes is a constant challenge. 
It's when the kids are bored and when they aren't interested in what's going on. Because then I have to reflect and think, okay, maybe it's me, maybe I'm not presenting this in a clear way. Today, Nicole is starting a new unit on writing personal statements for college. It's a critical set of skills her students need to master. And she's been working closely with her department chair to plan the lesson. A lesson plan embodies what students are going to do throughout the lesson, what actual skills you're going to teach to students, and what students are going to do with those skills in order to master them. So a lesson plan creates purpose for the next class. Yes, I want to introduce it. What do you think your main goal is? One of the first steps that I talk to teachers about when they're going to plan a lesson is really thinking about the end in mind. What do you want students to walk away from your class knowing? And that is your objective. So the objective is specific and skill-oriented, and it has to be measurable. My main goal is going to be to have the students complete the introduction to their personal statement. We have to be very specific. The skill here is persuasive writing, I would say, because students have to persuade a college that they need to be accepted. Okay, right over here. I couch it in terms of a do now, um, a mini lesson, guided practice, independent practice, and then your assessment. And each chunk plays a part in achieving the goal that you've set out from your objective. To begin that lesson, you're going to have a do now. And in my mind, a do now is a focused way to invest your students in what you need them to do. When each piece of your lesson has a purpose and flows well and is related to your objective, there will be a natural transition. What do you think a, an effective do now for that lesson would be? They have to compose at least five questions that they would ask somebody um, if they really wanted to get to know that person. Kind of just want to get them in the mindset of, you know, what a good personal statement is. All right, guys, 10 minutes. Date and the do now. A do now is usually 10 minutes max. It's a very short thing. Sometimes you can connect it to students' lives. The do now for many teachers is a routine as well. So it's a way for students to come into your class, to get out the materials, to be prepared for the day. And learning starts then. Class is the mini lesson. This is your opportunity in the mini lesson to give specific details and information about what you want students to learn. A mini lesson could last from 15 to 25 minutes. And the mini lesson is really that the crux of instruction. Teacher needs to teach a certain skill or an idea, and so the mini lesson is the teacher's opportunity to instruct and get that skill across. So in your mini lesson, what are you going to do? I'm going to show them some sample essays. Okay. And I want them to dissect and actually identify this is why this essay is good. And this will probably be done through a PowerPoint. How long do you think that's going to take? I think that may take 20, 25 minutes. What does a personal statement add to your application? Or does it add anything? Is it a waste of time? Okay, perfect. During that 25 minutes, you're doing the PowerPoint, you're showing effective and ineffective examples. What are students doing? Students will be during that time. So if you're giving a PowerPoint or you're um, having students read something and then you're going to discuss it, you really need to think through specifically what students are doing during that time. You said students are taking notes. I'm going to even push back and say that you need to have a specific method that students are going to take notes. You could have maybe a tea bar during this note-taking session, and one side is effective strategies, one side is ineffective strategies. So right away, students know exactly what they're looking for, and there's no, you know, there's no confusion. Okay, while we are viewing the PowerPoint, you guys will be taking notes in your notebook, but also on this tea chart. Okay, so today we are going to identify the effective techniques and ineffective techniques. The teacher's opportunity to model and show exemplars. So students themselves are looking at models. They're not yet creating it themselves. They're just identifying what makes something effective. So let's read this sample personal statement. Let's act as if we were going to accept or deny this person into our college. And too much family information? Are you selling yourself to my school? Why would I want a person? We shall look through
have a plan to walk around to know specifically who you have in front of you. So you know that this group back here likes to talk and maybe be off task. So your proximity is paramount. A well designed. Lie. Lie. Don't joke. No slang. Don't joke. No slang. Don't topic, the one that you chose. Okay? And then you are going to compose your introduction. At the end of the class. So the, I teacher is, to master uh, the teacher is teaching them how to uh, go about writing and applying to colleges. And in between, I see chat coming up. Uh, sorry, but uh, it's constantly disturbing me when I'm presenting my screen. Today. So in Ms. Rubinetti's class. Lessons don't always go as planned. And Nicole, running out of time, decides to turn the exit ticket into a homework assignment. Instead of having you write your introduction today. And I try to find, pinpoint the part where things fell apart. And then I think, what could I do next time? Nicole, how do you think that lesson went? My main goal for this class, they were supposed to have their introduction completed, or at least the first draft, um, an, an introduction to their personal statement. That did not go as planned. Um, we ran out of time. It's always hard to gauge Will students pick this up easily and be able to knock it out in five minutes or will they need 20 minutes? So sometimes it's difficult to tell. I think pacing is one of the hardest things in a lesson plan. We chunk it, we assign times to it, but sometimes a certain section of our lesson plan lasts longer or doesn't last as long as we intended it to last. And so there's still kind of this juggling act of being flexible and thinking on your toes. I really think that students did accomplish some of the goals that you set out for them. And I think from your mini lesson and from the discussion that students had after that mini lesson. Create an objective that is specific, skill oriented, and measurable. Create a do now that sparks student interest in the lesson. Present key concepts during the mini lesson. Use guided practice to model the concepts being taught. Use independent practice to allow students to apply new concepts and skills. Take time to reflect on the lesson after it's been taught. Assess student mastery based on the lesson plan objective. So, uh, thank you. That's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to share with you. And I now uh, leave you to planning your own lesson. Uh, right now, I can see a lot of people uh, writing in the chat. Uh, somebody wants me to share the slide of the nine point of the lesson plan. Uh, Rajeshri, ma'am, I was sharing the screen. Okay, which great uh, student uh, okay, these students seem to be in uh, the senior secondary level, uh, applying into colleges beyond that. Okay, so uh, the video link, uh, you can always Google, you will definitely uh, find it. Uh, difficult to find the Google link and uh, you will be able to locate it. There are uh, multiple lesson plans across subjects available, uh, ready-made, but I do not advise you to start using them because in our current day context, uh, these lesson plans uh, don't work well. Uh, they are for some other school. They are not customized for our classrooms. So uh, just give me a moment. I would like to... Uh, quickly uh, pause this recording and I will uh, head on 